Hey everyone, it's Tim Ria back here in studio uh, with Digital Health Summer Summit here in San Francisco. We got Dan Monroe, good friend, who's a contributor to Forbes magazine, great writer, and so we wanted to catch up. Hey, good to see you. Yeah, so I saw you at CES, I think, last or at Hems. CES, I'm a big fan of, in part because of the intersect with uh, consumer health and all the activity that's going on there. Always surprised at how big that grows every year. Yeah, I heard like 40% last year. And so we were getting down to brass tacks talking about interoperability, security. You had a five-part series on interoperability um, in kind of these two waves. So let's dig in there. Sure. So, yeah, interoperability is a huge issue, and we're just now starting to uh, see that surface on the consumer side with major announcements from Apple and uh, Google coming up next week at uh, I.O., and then Samsung, and who knows, maybe Amazon will dive in too now that they have a smartphone. Uh, the issue, though, is that we're siloing more data in, um, in, in a consumer way, and this is now health data. Uh, initially, it's fitness, but uh, the announcement with Apple was around uh, a companion partnership with Epic, so we're going from one silo to another, and uh, interoperability to me is a key issue in the sense of representing the consumer interest uh, first and foremost. The other one is, which I'm working on for August, is a five-part series uh, in much the same way around the other sort of bookend uh, topic around that, which is security, and security being a lot more than what we tend to think of in healthcare as being HIPAA compliant. Um, HIPAA compliant, uh, as we're learning quickly with some of the other uh, vendors, is that HIPAA compliance isn't security. The two aren't the same. Yeah. No, it's like hacking people's devices. I think Cheney had us disconnected. Yeah, in fact, that was um, part of the reason I selected August, was because it coincides very directly with the Black Hat Conference in Las Vegas. And last year, um, unfortunately, his demise, but um, J um, Barnaby Jack was the keynote that was supposed to present a solution. Well, actually, he was, he's a white hat, and last year he was going to present um, hacking into an implantable cardiac defibrillator and delivering a lethal shock. The year before, he actually did do uh, the presentation where he hacked into an infusion pump uh, and delivered uh, a lethal dose in a plexiglass dummy for the audience to see. So um, these are important elements in the sense of security. Yeah. Interoperability almost creates more security act, uh, uh, ways to break in. Exactly. And so they're, they're, in effect, flip sides of a very similar coin in the sense that you have to have interoperability and then you also have to have security in order to go with that. So every force has an equal and, and opposite force in the other direction. And I'm kind of seeing like, I know Apple doesn't want me to leave their ecosystem. Is there an opportunity to be, you know, when, when will this ever be interop truly? Yeah, so... The, probably the best part of the interoperability series that I did was the, the sort of final piece, which is I think is an encouraging footnote to all of this, which is a standard that is emerging. It's very early in its evolution, but it's a standard called FHIR, F -H -I -R, and um, it's actually being endorsed and supported by HL7, which is the sort of standards body for the healthcare industry. And it's based on RESTful APIs and so, sort of the web technologies that we're all familiar with in the sense of getting things to scale. So FHIR represents a real um, a hopeful and a real promising technology that could be and is on track to becoming a sort of de facto standard um, for doing these kinds of um, interoperabilities that are uh, independent of the giants. So uh, if people want to dig into your articles and, and, and catch up with you, what's next? Yeah, so always on Forbes, and um, it's an easy way to, to, um, to, to catch up. And then also I'm uh, a, a top writer on Quora, which is another channel that um, uh, a lot... How is Quora doing? Uh, uh, is doing really well. Um, they've now had their second year of the top writer program. 
and I was in the program for two years. So um, they just recently held uh, an annual, their first annual uh, top rider event in Mountain View, which is their headquarters. And I know they're doing one in November uh, in New York. So they're going gangbusters, and it's an interesting platform relative to Q&A. Um, and I think uh, it's an exciting, uh, it's ex it's an exciting place for uh, for new writers. Yeah. Hey, well, that's Dan Monroe, Forbes. Thanks for being on the show. Good to see you again.